Hello everybody and welcome to a video on why you die in Risk of Rain 2. It's because you got hit forehead. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to smash that like button and also destroy the sub button. I'm just kidding. It's no secret that you die a lot in this game. I mean, it's like the core part of a roguelike's gameplay loop after all. That being said, is it fun when you die? Is it the goal of your runs? No, obviously not. I don't think that needs any explanation, right? Here in this video, I'll give you some examples of my own deaths and explain exactly what happened. The goal is for you to take this information and apply it to your deaths, learn and understand what caused them, and improve. Let's get started. First, let's start with everybody's favorite way to die, scavengers. Now, the first death here is not solely due to the scavenger, but more of a misplay beforehand that then led to my death via scavenger. It's a good lesson of situational awareness and how important it is to constantly pay attention to all threats around you and not tunnel visioning on only one. The very first thing you do when seeing a scavenger on the stage is to assess the items that they have. You're looking for the hyper dangerous things such as the missile launcher, cube, or capacitor equipments, and or on death effects like gasoline and especially ceremonial daggers. Here, the scavenger had a cube, but nothing else, so he wasn't too much of a and threat. He hasn't even scavenged for anything else yet, so he is not scary at all. The scab is 0% scarier. As now. you heard me say, the scavenger wasn't currently dangerous, but easily could become so in a short amount of time. And oh, what do you know, the first item he loots is as the vagrant explodes. He gets a Tesla coin. What? Now my options have changed. Luckily, as I retreat a bit, the scav drops his aggro and I'm able to loot a bit and start neutralizing the other threats aside from the scavenger so that I can give him my undivided attention. Here is where the misplay happens. I see that both vagrants are pretty low, so I get in nice and close to ensure that my glaive bounces between them and I don't waste any time hitting other stuff. Normally, this would be fine, but we have the added threat of the scavenger with a Tesla coil, mind you. So the risks of going back in are pretty high. However, However, the last I saw of the scab was not him currently in combat and actually walking away from the scene, so I, incorrectly, presumed he would keep going in that direction. Now, it's important here to note that hindsight is always 2020, right? There's no way I could have known in the moment exactly what the scab would do and where he would go. All I knew was that going into this spot was taking a risk that I deemed worth it due to the potential of dealing with the other threats as soon as possible and then going with the scab. I popped the Jade Elephant a little too early. The brass contraption here to my right scares me with how close its rounds are coming, so I pop the elephant as a preemptive reaction to being hit just in case one shot does make contact. I had just seen a vagrant explode, so I thought I'd have enough time to go in and finish them both off before the next explosion, regardless of if my jade elephant was still active or not. Turns out this was the fatal mistake, as both the other vagrant's explosion happened sooner than I thought, and my elephant runs out. Both events spell my death because as the Vagrant takes me down to 10% HP, thank you one shot protection, the sneaky little scavenger rounds the corner and finishes me off with the Tesla. So the death here was due to multiple things. Number one, if you don't deal with the scavenger fast enough, they can and absolutely will get more powerful and much more dangerous as a result. The more time you spend trying to kill them, the more time you give them to actually kill you. Number two, on top of that, it's not like you're going to be fighting scavengers in a vacuum. You still have to deal with the other threats on the stage. If you don't correctly assess all of the threats, one seemingly insignificant factor can end in your death. Number three, taking risks is necessary. It's kind of in the name of the game, but you need to know when to take them. Hindsight is always going to be 2020, so don't stress out too much about making the mistakes, but rather being able to learn from them and adapt your play style for the next time. Moving on to the next scab death, this time it's directly due to the scavengers themselves, plural, and not the other threats on the stage. Let me just roll the clip first so you get the gist. Do that tab for everyone. All right, coin gun, you shouldn't be a threat with that. Does he have daggers? Is that daggers? Chat, that's daggers, isn't it? That's daggers. Now. So the first scav I see has daggers, which are a big threat, if not the biggest. So I decide that avoiding it entirely is my safest bet. As I retreat though, a void reaver spawns. So my mindset immediately changes due to the context now being me able to insta kill the scavenger with the reaver's explosion. But as I round the next corner to find the teleporter, because avoidance is still the safest call, I'm still looking to do that. I find yet another scavenger with a missile launcher. Yeah, this is pretty much the worst case scenario with scavengers. So I then then resort to plan B, which was to take out the Void Reaver and hope to kill the Dagger Scavenger with it. However, that requires getting both of them in the same place, meaning I have to re-aggro the Scavenger and wait for the Reaver to get close. Yeah. Alright, screw it. Let's go for it, chat. Let's go for it. I'm gonna pop my, uh, as soon as he throws his Thick Whip, I'm gonna pop my Jade Elephant. Alright, here it is. Alright, pop a Jade Elephant. There we go. 
They didn't even come. Oh, there. They was delayed. That was super delayed. All right, here's the scab. This could be good. This could be very good. All right, dagger to come again. Ah, <laughs> come on, dude. What do you do? What do you do? For yeah, it turns out dagger scavengers are not to be messed with at all. Only if you have teddy bears on top of full HP and barrier should you even think to fight a scavenger with ceremonial daggers in the open. The fact that they proc off of every single thick whip attack, which is when he throws the big orange balls, means that you will have an absurd number of daggers flying your way on a regular basis. Know that the orange ball attack is also the scavenger's secondary ability, meaning if they have backup mags, they will be able to throw six of those attacks attacks in a row so take extreme caution the final scavenger related death i have for you is a different kind of cautionary tale no matter how well your run is going no matter how much health defense and damage you have there is always the possibility of something like this happening <laughs> oh no oh, oh! You may be saying, well, uh, Wooly, of course you died, you silly Billy, because you spawned like a million scavengers. What the heck did you think was going to happen? Well, I'll just let myself explain what went on. Literally one shot. Killer Patrick Star. 3,397 HP. Goes to negative 837 in one hit. One singular hit. 3,397 HP goes to negative 837 HP in one single hit. I think he got like a, a, oh, resonance disc. You're right. That was a resonance disc. Look at that damage right there. How do you survive that? How are you supposed to survive that? It's 1,800 on bottom, 17 on top, 470. How are you supposed to survive that? What do you do? What do you do? In summary, no matter how safe you think you are versus scavengers, always assume the worst possible outcome, always. Moving away from the scavenger deaths, let's talk about some more everyday scenarios. The first one here is yet another example of situational awareness and not tunnel visioning onto one threat. Clay Templars are no joke. After scavengers, they are next on my priority list. So here I pop a combat shrine and out pops a couple Clay Templars. Or so I thought it was a couple. Uh oh, foreshadowing. I know that given my mobility, all I have to do is kite them around in a circle and keep a tight enough angle to avoid their shots. There is relatively low risk here as the two Templars I see, which are the only two I thought thought the shrine had spawned are directly in front of me and once you're in close range templars are a very small threat with their knockback being the only real danger but as you may expect i get gunned down to half hp from another clay templar that spawned pretty much directly opposite of the first two and at a later time so i didn't catch it no big deal i thought as i rotated over to get him to stop firing my plan was then to simply move back and forth repeatedly between the two areas as it would continually cancel their shots however and how my death occurs the lack of awareness that a pack of lesser wizards just spawned with one being overloading leads me to, sure enough, getting hit, losing the vast majority of my remaining health, panicking, and then dying to the Templars while attempting to retreat. Again, tunnel visioning on a single threat is a bad idea the later your run goes. There are plenty of things that can pose a real threat at that point, and if you fail to even identify a single enemy in time, it will probably end up with your death. And the final death I want to cover here is the most important lesson that I wish to teach. Don't let your significant other touch your game ever. As cute, handsome, funny, whatever, as as they may be, they are always looking to mess with you. Always. No idea what I'm doing. He's gonna die. Did he just... Obviously, I'm joking here with this one. And that about does it. Leave a like or dislike on the video, depending on if this information helped you or not, and also a comment below to better let me know your thoughts. You can check out my stream over at twitch.tv slash woollygaming and consider joining our Discord server as well. Thank you for watching. Yeah. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, Kayla! What did you do? What did you think was gonna happen? This little baby game where you can just, oh, let me just walk around a little bit, play Sims a little bit. E-girl, by the way. I'm so let me go play support Soraka. <laughs> what did you think was gonna happen? It's a man's game, Kayla. Don't touch my game. It's a man's video game over here. Oh my word. I love you. Okay. No, no, not on the lips, that's TOS. All right. All right, well, boys, uh, that was the last round of the stream. We're dead. <laughs> I died while peeing. That's how much of a pro gamer I am, chat. Died while peeing. I'll see you boys later.